cybersecurity, the new modality. Hi, I'm Tiffany Wen. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Spectrum Labs. I'm also the GM and a co-founder of Oasis Consortium, a nonprofit to set up industry standards for brand safety. Very glad to meet all of you and spend the next 10 minutes talking about cybersecurity. So 2020 was a hard year and we see more and more people moving online. And in this virtual world, we also become more and more exposed to cyber threat. So to start with, I wanna say that cyber threat is omnipresent. So for the longest time, we thought it was so far from us. It is a nation state level of threat. Right. In the past months, one of the biggest news is the U.S. government charged six Russian intelligence officers for their cyber attacks. And this is big news in the cybersecurity world. And in 2014, and if you remember, Sense Corporation was attacked by the Iranians and caused $14 million damage with single attack. But today, you know, in this world of COVID, when we are all locked down, in the year of the U.S. election, we see the conspiracy theories, the misinformation, the online toxicity fly all over us. And we came to realize that actually cyber threat is not that far away from us. It is all around us. Well, um, I want to end this point on the fact that how cyber threat is omnipresent and how we can react and tackle that. Um, using uh, one of my favorite philosophers um, and the book, The War and uh, the Art of the War from Sun Tzu, is that know the self and know the adversary to win a hundred battles. So know the self. So there are five actually major currents under this iceberg of the omnipresence of cyber attack. So the first one is really the scale of computing power. You know, we all benefit from it. Today, when we're connecting to the gaming system, every single thing is so vivid. Obviously, we benefit from the scale of computing power. But at the same time, the bad actors also benefit from it to execute the operations they can do in a very sophisticated and automated way thanks to the scaled computing power. And the second and the data lake. Corporations nowadays really just dump the data into the data lake so that they can come back to use it, to analyze it, to really make their business thrive with more and more data they know about all of us. But with those big volume of the data out in the wild, we realize that our identities are no longer the passport numbers or, uh, or social security numbers. Actually, our identities are so closely tied to every single piece of information we generate, how we like a post on the Facebook, how we talk on Reddit, and they become the tools and the loopholes actually for cyber attackers to weaponize themselves with, to social engineer with. And today, this data explosion really tied the data to our identities. So if the scale of the computing power and the data explosion make a cyber attack easier for the bad actors, well, let's look at what actually have made it harder for the good actors to react to. Well, the first I would say is in the past two decades, we really see the mobile first and the cloud native trends become real. Right. But that also means that we have way bigger attack surface for the bad actors and way harder for the good actors to define and secure what is the parameter for us to keep secure. Because nowadays, the cyber attack can happen at your fingertip, at your device, at the mobile you're using, and at home as we're all locked down, working from home. 
And if this is the trend in the past 20 years, what's coming in the next 20 years? Well, we see IoT bringing tens of billions of devices online. And those devices don't even have humans interact with them. They're automated, they're hard to take inventory with, and they really become the newest vulnerable places for attackers to penetrate with. And AI making it even harder. It's so hard to tell actually a fake person created by AI and a real human beings and make the troll, the fake news, the misinformation and social engineering all the easier and make good actors to catch back actors way harder. So let's look at the last trend, is actually this online toxicity. So for the longest time, we human beings are the weakest link. We are, we are being the victims of the fiction to get into the corporations by the attackers. But this year, actually even in the last election, 2016 in the US, we see that we human beings being weaponized. We are emotionally engaged by potentially conspiracy and information, misinformation campaigns and being used to drive the agenda by the cyber threats. So the contrarian part of the opportunity to that is very interesting though. Um, the platforms today, all the digital platforms from social media, uh, dating, gaming, realize that the faster they can prove themselves to be a trusted platform, the faster they can engage and acquire their users. Well, we talk about these five trends, right? The scaled computing power, the data explosion, and the extended parameters by the mobile first and cloud native trends, and the rise of IoT and AI, and last, the race to trust. And those trends are really the first principal currents which drive this trillion dollar crisis. So one of the four Forbes article indicated by 2021, we would have spent over six trillion USD dollars in cybersecurity. So the impact is huge. But more than that, as I mentioned, it's no longer a far fetching somewhere at a nation state level or big corporations. It is with us every single 39 seconds, there is a hacker attack happening. This near constant state is scary to a certain point, isn't it? So as I said, it's very, very important to know the self and know the adversaries to understand what are the key currents driving today's cyber threats and when you and when we create a solution to solve those problems, we have to come back to those fundamental trends behind this iceberg. So over a year ago, I went into the operator role at a Spectrum Lab, leading the growth for the company. And Spectrum Lab is the AI platform for online trust and safety. So we use AI to detect the disruptive behaviors from sexual harassment, child sexual abuse, grooming, all the way to terrorism. And we also create a UI interface for the security and the safety team to increase their productivity to do their job. And since the inception, we've been lucky enough to work with the major platforms like the Riot Gaming Platform, the Me Group for Dating, um, the Macari for the Marketplace, and the Pinterest for Social Platforms. And those platforms that we all live and embrace. And so working and partnering with them, we secure over 1 billion users safe. Well, do you think that technology solutions will be enough to keep an internet a safer place? My answer is no. The longer I work in the space, the more I invest in the space, the more I read about space. And I realize the fundamental issue is we actually never agreed with each other what is considered to be trusted and safe. Different platforms between dating and gaming can really categorize a piece of the same information differently as to is that conspiracy or not versus freedom of speech. Is that piece of information sexual harassment 
or it is just a flirtatious message. And if different platforms cannot agree, what is considered to be safe? How would it be able to come together, build a safer internet that we all want to live in? And that's the reason. Over two months ago, I started this nonprofit called Oasis Consortium. Really, along with the leading players in the space, to identify what should be the pillars of online trust and safety, and we come up with, as the name goes, the Oasis, the openness, the inclusion, the diversity, the accountability. You know. Do we have a leader in the big institution to drive the online trust and safety, security? We talk about a data protection, identity protection, and innovation. Do we use humans? Do we use policies to reduce the human risk, or we use technologies to enhance human beings to do a better job? And after all, the sustainability. And trust me, the bad actors are acting so fast; they are getting so sophisticated. It's all the more important for the good actors to realize we need to have a roadmap, a roadmap to build the fundamental infrastructure to make our platform safe and secure, and also have a budget to grow it, to grow the roadmap, the team, the agenda, and make everything transparent, inclusive, and safe. For our users. So with that, really thank you for your time with me to talk about cybersecurity and this specific lens about online trust and safety. And you can get connected with me on Twitter and LinkedIn. And thank you very much for your time.